Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is gonna rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And it's so good to be back home. And uh, we had a phenomenal time. We were in, uh, in Mexico City. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done in, in Mexico. It's amazing to see what God is doing in Latin America, period. But uh, we were training about 60 pastors, senior pastors of, of uh, different churches that, uh, that really want to see their churches elevated. And just to show you a, a, a few pictures here, this kid right here, let me just tell you about this guy right here. Um, I was uh, speaking at a church, and uh, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge, just someone... Um, I just felt like, man, there's someone here that, that wants to commit suicide. You just want to end your life. That guy wanted to end his life that night, and, uh, and God just rocked his world. And then, of course, there's some training. You guys can keep going, um, keep going, just keep throwing slides up. These are all senior pastors of different churches, and we're just kind of just pouring into their lives because they are impacting their nation. And I know that this is going to be the beginning of a network in all Latin America of just seeing leaders uh, growing the call and, and the, oh yeah, well, how'd that get in there? Those are my fish. Oh yeah, I took a break too. I go, I, I not only fish for men, I fish for fish too. And uh, that was awesome right there. Oh yeah, that was awesome. You can all clap, that's fine. For all my fishermen out there, that's how you catch fish. Yeah. But uh, it was such a great time, but there's no place like home. Um, and it's, it's just great to see what God's doing even here at Elevate Church and seeing people get developed. And, and even while we were gone, leaving in-house people here to speak in our church, which was amazing, just to see the gift that's in this house is, is always a blessing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're going to do this day in the hearts of people. Lord, we pray that we have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart ready to receive your word, Father, that changes our life. I thank you that today, Father, if people walked in here being heavy with any cares, heavy with any burdens, oppressive, anything, Father, that's trying to keep them from being everything you've called them to be, Lord, we just pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit that brings freedom, liberty, and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. We love the fact that we are here in your house today. And so, Lord, speak to our hearts. Do something in us that reflects who you are in us. In Jesus' name, if you all believe that, say amen. amen. Well, you know what? I, um, I was going to kick off my new series uh, at the movies today, but I just felt heavy in my heart. I'm like, you know what? Before we get started, there's a subject I want to talk about. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I loved, I mean, I, I, I remember since I was a little kid, I've always loved climbing things. Any climbers out there, you just, as a kid, you would climb it. I would climb rooftops, you know what, I would climb buildings, I would climb, you know what, statues. Anyone, anyone ever been to Griffith Park? Do you guys remember, the, how many remember the bear statue? Man, I used to climb that thing when I was a little kid, get on its shoulders, and my mom would be like, Vájate, te vas a caer. You know, she would yell at me, scream at me. Um, but one of my favorite things to do when I was a kid was climb fences throughout my neighborhood. Why? You just got to places faster. You know, it's like, why use the sidewalk when you can climb fences? And, um, and I would be jumping from one fence to the next fence to the next fence. But you know what? I can still hear the sound of my neighbors. Everybody say neighbors. neighbors. You know, we all live in a proximity around people at work and at, in our community. And these neighbors, it was, it was just like clockwork. They would say, get off that fence. I remember getting yelled at like that. Now, if this doesn't relate to you, trust me, soon you'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, I've been on that fence. And so I, I, I would get yelled at, get off that fence, get off that fence. And I just thought, man, you know what? I think I'm going to talk about get off the fence for a little bit and, and really just speak to our hearts today. Now, what does that mean, get off the fence? Well, let's go right here. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 with me. And let's show you. Look at this. It says, and then. Everybody say, and then. Amen. Okay, let me just tell you what Matthew is, is talking about. As Jesus spoke these words, when you see a verse that begins with, and then, 
It simply is talking about the end times, the last days. Days where things begin to look like, man, it seems like the apocalypse is happening. I mean, just being in Hollywood uh, just a few weeks ago, just seeing all the, the craziness and all the weird stuff that's happening. I'm like, man, this is weird. But that would be, and then. It says, and then many will be what? Oh, let's say this again. Many will be. Offended. I know that's a cuss word in church, but that's okay. We can say it. And many will be. How many? many? How many? many? That's a lot. It's so many that it's probably hard to give you an accurate number. I mean, let's just take it. Let's let's take let's take it to a fact. The fact is this: that only three percent of Christians actually tithe and give God what belongs to Him. Three percent of Christians. Three percent. So, if only three percent of Christians actually trust God with their finances. Just imagine the percentage of Christians that have offense issues. This is not talking to people that don't have Jesus. This is talking to people that are Christians. This is a message for the church. People that are far away from God, listen, they, know, they, they already know what they're doing. They're good at it. They sin. It's what they do. They're blind. They can't see. They're, they're stumbling constantly. But this is for the church. And he says, and then many will be offended, and look at this, and repelled, and will begin to what? And desert him who they ought to trust and obey, and will what? Stumble, and do what? Fall away. Oh, this is where it gets pretty bad. And betray one another. And pursue one another with what? Hatred. That's pretty intense. In other words, there's an escalation to offense. It's not just, oh, that person was offended. No, it's deeper. I, I think until we understand the depth of offense, I think when we really begin to get the revelation of the, uh, of the or, or original root of offense, I think we'll get a different perspective today about being an offended person constantly. And so I want you to please pay attention because offense is just, it's not just, oh, they got upset at me and, or, or man, they're holding on to something that happened in their past. It was a really hurtful experience. No, this is Jesus talking about offense with, with some clarity and where it comes from and, and the levels and the stages it begins, that begins to take place. Look, it starts with betrayal, right? Offense leads to betrayal. Betrayal leads to hurt. Now, let's take the word betrayal. What is betrayal? Have you ever been betrayed? Anybody ever been betrayed? Let me give you a definition of betrayed. Look at this. Well, let's go back and finish the verse because I'm already jumping ahead. Let's go back and finish the verse. Back and finish the verse. That was you, media. There we go. And then you're offending me, man. Okay, and then many will be offended and repelled and will begin to distrust and desert him whom they ought to trust and obey and will stumble and fall away and betray one another and pursue one another with hatred. Now look at this, betrayal. Betrayal means when I seek my benefit and my own protection at the expense of my relationships. In other words, I put me first in front of you. Whatever, whatever the circumstance may be, I want to make sure that I look good at the expense of you looking bad. Hey, we just hit the mother nerve, didn't we? <laughs> now, if you have ever been in a setting, a group setting with anyone, and you, you were the one that always did this and talked about how great you are, knowing that this was a group effort, that's betrayal. And from betrayal... It goes into hatred. What's hatred? Look at this. Hatred is simply this. It's loveless. When you reach a place of hate, what, what is it? It's loveless. It's unhappy. Dang. It means harsh, unkind, dislike. Do you dislike anyone? When you get to the place of dislike, you're now at the level of hate. I hate that about that person. That, that means that there are some issues in your heart called offense and they grow and they grow offense comes to steal it comes to kill and it comes to destroy and it's also know this it is a spirit everybody say a spirit if you don't understand the severity of offense 
you'll just keep living offended all the time. I know a bunch of people that are always offended. Always offended. There's always something that messes them up. You know what? It's the kind of people that literally they sabotage anything good. Because offense says this, someone's always after me. That's the spirit. And so it's the spirit of offense. And the sad part is that it's infiltrated the church already. It's infiltrated not only the churches. It's infiltrated people's homes. It's infiltrated people's companies, the places they work in. But you know where it comes from a lot? It comes from church people. Church people are the most offended people. They are. They're constantly divorcing churches. The moment something that they don't like happens is the moment that they say, "Mm, I'm leaving. It's so true. You know what? Be careful in training your children how to handle offense because when you don't address offense, you're really sowing a seed of divorce. Every time something bad happens in a relationship, you leave. And so we have to stop the noise. We have to come back to the revelation that, wait a minute, this whole thing called offense, it's a spiritual thing. There's a root to it, and his name is Satan. As long as there's a devil, there will be offense. You need to know this. Now, let me lay out the foundation so I back all this up scripturally because you'll never look at offense the same way. You're going to change the way you see offense, and next time you get offended at me, you're going to be like, oh, dang. Are you guys ready? Okay. And, and here's the truth. Don't, aren't people always offended everywhere? Uh, let's just take, let's just take the, the greatest platform that everybody and their mother has. Social media. It's so funny how many times I'll be on social media and then people just like, boom, boom. It's like ping pong. They're like going at it. Or, or this one, this is my favorite one. Oh, I guess it's going to be time to defriend some people. And they want everybody to know. <laughs> you know what? If they really came out in their flesh, they, it would be more like the purge. It's time to purge some people. You know, I was originally going to call this message something other than get off the fence. I was going to call it murder in the church. You know why? Because the Bible says this. It says that uh, if you hate your brother, it is as, uh, as, of, as, as of committing murder. And so offense is no small thing. Offense, it kills and, and so there's this, there's this underlying theme that goes on in our life without us even knowing. All of a sudden, you, you don't like what, like, you'll see a picture of, of your friends with other friends, and you just get offended. Oh, come on, I wasn't invited. <laughs> huh? Right? Or, 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 or a friend posts a picture of all of you, and they say something cool about someone's outfit and didn't say something cool about yours, and you're offended. And so there's this, shh. So there's this, constant, there's this constant issue that we deal with. Or how about this one? You know what? You get offended in traffic, right? Someone cuts you off, you get offended. Or you go to a restaurant and, and you know what? The service was horrible and you say things like this. I will never eat here again. Hot flash. They don't care. <laughs> They're just going to keep cooking their meals whether you come or not. Praise God, right? We get mad at technology, Right? You start breaking that laptop. You start breaking that phone when it's not. Guess what? Offense is something that is rampant everywhere. We can all find an area of our life that gets offended. I'll use another one, and I'm sure we've all had this. Have you ever been that nice person, that kind person, that you see a whole group of people coming, you're about to walk in the restaurant, and you're like, oh, I'll just hold the door for them. You hold the door for the group, for the people, and they walk in as if you're like the, 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 the door person. And they walk in, and they don't even say thank you. They're just all walking in like, like that's your job, dude. <laughs> and you're like this. You're welcome. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? Let's be honest here. You offensive people, you. You're just so, so I'm talking to the right crowd. Just like we go nutty nut, huh? Everybody say offense. Okay. Listen, it's, it's time to break the fence on a fence. Get off the fence. If not, you'll be like Humpty Dumpty who sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. While you're sitting on the fence of offense, let me tell you something. If I were to sit on this, I'd be a little bit wobbly on it. 
When you're offended, you're wobbly in your walk. When you don't serve, you what? Swerve. Okay, well, when you sit on the fence, you're going to be wobbly. And what sucks is this. Eventually, let's say there was an earthquake. Let's say something tragic were to happen. You're going to fall off that fence regardless. So we have to stop building these fences of offenses because what, what happens is you're really just... You're really just setting yourself up to block the very thing that God wants to do with your life. You are literally just going year by year while you're sitting on the fence of offense, thinking about what everybody else did in your life. Everyone else, including the person that you're offended at, they have moved on. You're still sitting on the fence looking at everybody do life. It only hurts you. The person that was your offender they're living they're living life like whatever you're you're in the prison of me you're in the prison of you and what happens is it begins to get you very resentful very bitter very angry listen this offense has so many layers of so many things that can literally cause us to hinder what God wants to do in us and through us I promise you the 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 Greek word for offense is scandalon. I want to change that to scandalous. You're scandalous when you have offense in your life. Now look at this. It also means this. It means to entrap. It means stumbling block. It means entice to sin. So then we understand that Jesus said, and many will be offended. So where does this offense come? Many will be offended. Where does this? Well, the only one who traps you is Satan. The only, one, the only one who entices you to sin is Satan. He's the only one who likes to come and put us in the trap. Offense is a trap. It's the enemy's bait to get us to get offended on a daily basis. Every day is an opportunity to be offended or to reject being offended. That is your responsibility. Now listen, I know there are people, there are legitimate people who are just constantly putting their foot in their mouth and saying stupid stuff. I get it. That happens a lot. But here's the reality. You can't let someone's offensiveness cause you to change and now be the offenser. You can't do that. You can't control what people say, but you can't control what you're willing to listen to and how you're willing to react or respond. That is your choice. No one can control you. As a matter of fact, offense is like the, the physical remote, but for a person. It hits your EB, your emotional buttons. And you have to be careful because offense does that. You're one moment, you're good. The next moment, you're bad. One moment, you're good. Have you ever walked into work and then people are acting funky? Hot flash. They're offended. That's something that just happened in that moment. Think about it. It's a constant thing that's happening in everyone's life. You're agitated. You're irritated. You're upset about something. You're disappointed. All those things are camouflage to offense. We just don't know it because we're so used to in this society living this way that it just becomes so normal that we learn how to coexist with it and we never want to call it what it is. We never want to, no one here wants to admit that, oh yeah, I'm an, I'm an, I'm always a, I'm an offensive person. I'm very, I'm always, a, no one wants to admit to that. But when you start seeing the reality and you start really, you know what, undoing the layers and realize that, whoa, man, I'm always, I always got an attitude. It's a spirit. And a spirit has an attitude. And so here you have Jesus who's trying to confront this attitude. And if you're not careful, listen, we will continue to build these fences that will restrict, restrict you from the ability to do what God's called you to do. I'll never forget. I remember when I first got saved, you know what? My father, man, he just did some really bad stuff and he harmed our family and everything. And, uh, and you know what, uh, the woman he was with burned the house down with us in it. And, and you know what, my aunt had to save me. I carried that with me for many years. For 21 years, I carried that 
anger, that resentment, that bitterness. And I'll never forget it. I was in church, had just received Christ. It was only been about two years. And he said, Mauricio, he says, if you don't forgive your father, that can't forgive you. Mind you, I barely knew the Bible at two years in. But I, knew, but I knew the voice of God when he said, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. And I had every right to be angry. But guess what? You have, yeah, you have the right to be angry, but you don't have the right to sin once you come to Jesus. Be angry, but do not what? So you can be angry. Just don't let that entice you to sin. Because once that entices you, you're trapped. And once you're trapped, it becomes, let's just go New Testament. It's called stronghold. It holds you strong. And that stronghold will begin to literally control how you live life. And and God wants us to be liberated of strongholds. God wants us to be set free. That's why he says, and whom the son sets free is free indeed. God wants us to to be completely free from the offenses of men. And offenses will always come. As long as there's a devil, there's going to be offense. Every single day is an opportunity to be offended. Listen, offense will also create all kinds of stumbling blocks. Look at this. It will block your spiritual growth. It can block how you perceive God's plan for your life. For example, I know that there are people all throughout the church that are disappointed at God. You could say, I I don't hate God, but I'm mad at God. And without really knowing, you're probably upset because, you know what, I thought I would be a lot further than I would be right now. I thought I would have that career by now. I thought I would be married by now. And we start having all these offenses towards God, and we start blaming God for all the things that happened in our life. And without even knowing, we really have this spirit that is constantly offended at something that didn't go your way. Part of offense is control. Human nature, we want to control our environment. And when you lose control or when things get out of control, you get offended. Why? Because it's not in your power to take care of that situation. And then what happens, we start having all these trip-ups. It's also a stumbling block to your family's restoration. When you hold on to a fence, don't even expect to be healed in family. There is going to be a stumbling block from your family being restored, from their being healing. I'm telling you, it's, it, the Bible says this, when, when you have odd against your brother, when you have offensive issues, it says that your prayers are hindered. So you're wondering, why isn't God answering my prayers? Because you have caused a hindrance yourself. And so we have to begin to address these offenses. Look at your neighbor and say, get off the fence. That's not me. You still don't think it's you. Okay. We'll see right now. We're going to continue to talk about this subject. Listen, offense is like an automatic weapon. Once once you pull the trigger, it never stops firing. It's just constant, constant, constant. It just kind of becomes your DNA, becomes who you are. You don't get your way, you get upset. You don't get your way, you get angry. All of a sudden, it just becomes a little bit more of who you become in your DNA and your character. Okay, um, look at this. Proverbs 18, 19. Look at this. It says, an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Dang. An offended friend is harder. Listen, look look, look how strong the hold is. It is so much harder. In other words, what God is saying is like, we can take a whole city before we can take an offended person. Dang. Do you see the power of of a stronghold of you're trying to pull out and it's like, nope, you ain't going nowhere. And the enemy's like, nope, I got you. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's like a bear trap. Cock. Like that. Did you hear that? we do sound effects in our sermons. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trap. The enemy comes and he traps you. And then it's hard to get over a fence. Why? Because it's a spirit. It comes from the enemy. And once you realize that, whoa, I got to watch this spirit, this attitude. We call it attitude. It's a spirit. It's the wrong spirit. It's not the spirit of God. That's the spirit of the enemy. 
And so it says, an offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with what? Bars. What does that say? What does that say? That says this to me. Just picture a castle and just, prince, just pretend you're like the princess or you're the prince. And, and you want to live life. But you're, you're, you're in this, this fortified city and you're locked behind bars. What, what does that say to me? That says that offense only imprisons you. It imprisons you. While everyone else has moved on, you're still in your little prison reminiscing what they did to you. They're, 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 they've gotten married. You're bitter. They've had kids. You're ticked. Right? They've got the, the business. You didn't. They suck. You, you know, you just, we just can't keep going. And then what happens is once you stay on that fence, you're like so upset. Eventually, that offense, it gets the best of you. And Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And then before you know it, man, now you're like this. You're just like, uh, you're just looking at everyone's life. Everybody's just like, hey, oh, hey, hey, God, hey. It looks funny, but it's the truth. That's what happens. Listen, God called you to be the head, not the tail. Above, not beneath. He wants you to be off the fence And he wants you to be on the ground, and he wants you to walk into your destiny. He wants you to walk into your divine purpose. But when you're on the fence, you ain't going nowhere. Don't you wish that your fences had wheels so someone could push you? (laughs) So many of us, we go to parties like, hey, man, where are we going? Party over here, party over there. Okay. And we're just like walking around. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, hey, you want to hang out? Hmm. What? You got all this fortified city going on that you don't let nobody in. Why? Because you know what? I've been betrayed. So I can't let you. See, what happens is you start sabotaging anything that's good because of your experience of the past. You never know good if it was in front of you and spitting on your face as it's talking to you. And then you're angry. Why am I not further? Why don't I have any friends? Because that spirit has now controlled even the relationships, divine relationships that God wants you to have. It's that whole statement or that phrase, it's too good to be true. Are you here today? So it's a spirit. Stop getting behind the fence. Don't get trapped. But look, God tells us how to handle this. Listen to me, church. In Luke 17, 3, he says this. He says, pay attention. And always be on your guard looking out for one another. Looking out for who? Looking out for who? Wouldn't that, that, that's a cool concept. What What if I really cared so much about you that I looked out for you as well? Looking out for one another. If your brother sins... Misses the mark, sincerely tell him and reprove him. And if he repents, feels sorry for having sinned, what do you do? You know what's shocking? It's so, it's so shocking how many people are offended at someone and that someone didn't even know it. Like you're just so like, mm, and they're just, they're just like, yay. Like nothing happened because the reality is to them, like nothing happened. And so the reason that we still have, we still have these issues is because we don't know how to address offense. There's, listen, stop this false humility of keeping your mouth shut. Stop it. Because you know what? Number one, it don't look pretty. The reality is this. If there is an issue, it is healthy to have healthy conflict and to address some things that maybe have taken place. If someone offended you and hurt you, go tell them. Now, your delivery is everything. You can't just go there and be like, you know, you jerk. You, you can't do that. Or like, you know what, it's all your fault. Because No, you can't do that either. When you, when you address someone, you have to go and, and, and just look out for one another and say, hey, you know what, that comment you made, that really hurt me. 
You know that statement you made with some people? How about go to the source first before you go around slandering people? Like, go ask that person, hey, you know what, I, I kind of heard, but I'd rather come to you and just ask you, hey, I heard that, you know, that you were making some comments that weren't so very, you know, they just weren't very kind from what I understand. But you know what, I'd rather hear it from you. Is that what you said? Yeah, I said that. I'm sorry. Okay. I just wanted you to know that hurt me, okay? So please don't do that next time. If you have an issue with me, come tell me, and I'll address it. Forgive me if I offended you. I'm sorry. Wouldn't that just be awesome? If more people would just open their wonderful, I mean, we already do this on the road, yelling at everybody. Might as well use it for something positive. If they sincerely ask for forgiveness, you are responsible to forgive that person. That is your responsibility. And if you don't tell the person that has offended you something, You're wrong. They're no longer wrong. You're wrong. You're off. You are not, you are not created. You were not created to hold on to offense. You were not, you won't, you won't last. It will break you. It will alter you. It will change your original character that God has placed inside you. It'll mess you up. You cannot just hold on to all these grievances that you've experienced with people. It, it's, it's, listen, it's more powerful than you. That's why Jesus makes it so clear. Pay attention. Let's keep reading some more verses, okay? Because offense is from the devil. And, and when you think about this, look, this is pretty, it says, did I read you Matthew 16, Matthew 6, 12 through 15 yet? Look, look at this. Let's, let's go there. Look. It says, it says, and forgive us. Now remember, this verse is the verse where the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Do you guys remember that? Okay, so, so think about it. So Jesus starts teaching them how to deal with offense. They didn't ask, they didn't ask, hey, teacher, teach us how not to be offended. Because Jesus, no, they would never ask for that. But look where Jesus takes it, man. He goes right at it. He says, okay, when you pray, he says, and that's this is the 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 middle part of it of the verse. It says, and forgive us our what? As we have what? Who what? So you're saying, God, forgive us our sins. He says, This is how you pray. Forgive us our sins, God. Forgive. Amazing how many of us want to be forgiven for junk. It's so much easier to go to God and say, I'm sorry, but so much difficult for you to hear from someone else. And so here the verse, Jesus says, when you pray, you say, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us, against, against us, right? Against or against you. And don't let us yield to temptation. The temptation of what? To continue being offended. It's a temptation. Every single day is an opportunity for you to be offended at someone. Every single day. And it's almost like, okay, dang, I really got to pay attention. Because this is like every five minutes. And so think about this. So Jesus teaches them how to pray. Can you imagine if the Lord's Prayer was our prayer every day? I think we would pay more attention. Why? Because now we're more intentional. We're intentional with what Jesus said. He said, and say this, and don't let us yield to the temptation, but rescue us. Everybody say, rescue us. us. Offense is from the devil, but only Jesus can rescue you. But rescue us from the who? So where does offense come from? The evil one. So the next time you're offended, it's not the person you're offended at. Think about this. The person that's causing you the offense, they're going to spend eternity with you. They'll probably be your neighbor in heaven. But he says, but rescue us from the evil one. We, we, gotta know, we have to know the, the, the originator of offense. Because if not, then, 
then we'll be trapped constantly. You, you'll, you, you won't move forward if, if there's a delay, if there's, God wants to move, but, but offenses will keep you from God's plan and purpose for your life. And so you have to get this. Everybody say, get off the fence. Get off the fence. So the answer to break the fence of offense is repentance and forgiveness. You start with repentance. Forgive me my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. That's the key constantly. Look at this one. Luke 17, 4 says, and even if he sins against you seven times in a day, look at your spouse and say, dang, should have never read that verse. <laughs> and turns to you seven times and says, I repent. I am sorry. You must forgive him. Give up resentment. Give up what? <laughs> and consider the offense as recalled and annulled. Amen. amen. I got two men that said amen. That's awesome. <laughs> the ladies, they, they were like, zip it. <laughs> Only guys. Isn't that interesting how men are more quick to forgive than women are? Ladies were like, <laughs> yeah. Looking at her husband, why did you bring me to church today? Why do you have to go there? Get off the fence. Over fence. Get off. The word forgive. The word forgive, let's, let's get and understand what the word forgive. Look, the word forgive means this. It means to set free. To let go. To release. To cancel. To discharge or to completely liberate. When you liberate others, you get liberated. It's like that verse, whatever you sow, you reap. What goes around? Oh, you all know that one, huh? Bunch of heathens in the church. You know that one like, oh, you'll get chores. It's never positive. It's always negative connotation, right? Yeah, whatever you sow, you reap. And so to set free, to let go, to liberate. Now, getting off the fence is a cute statement. But getting off the fence involves identifying the characteristics of offense. What are the characteristics of a person that's offended? Let's look at that. I'm going to give you five so that maybe you can check yourself before you wreck yourself. Are you ready? Number one, entitlement. Entitlement. That's the person with offense who feels they're owed something. In other words, they value what they have in themselves and they feel that they've worked so hard and they deserve to be elevated. It's like that person that has been working for the company for five years, 10 years, 20 years, and then some, you know, new person comes in for five minutes and they get promoted. And you're like, what? Wait a minute, that was my position. That's entitlement. Listen, here's the truth. Nobody owes you anything. God has given you everything you need, and so to have a you owe me is the wrong attitude. That's, that's, that is a offensive spirit. Entitlement. It belongs to me. I deserve that raise. I deserve that promotion. They shouldn't be in that position. I should be in that position. I'm better than them. I'm smarter than them. That's the problem. You think you're smart. And we'll leave it right there. Before I offend somebody. If you're getting offended at my message, I'm talking to you. Yeah. If you're just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Okay, you're offended. Help you, Jesus. Number two, pride. Pride. Prideful people are, <clears throat> are self-reliant. Can I get some tea in the cup, please? Are self-reliant instead of God-reliant. Pride. When pride attacks, it doesn't allow us to see the entire picture. 
Have you ever talked to someone, you're trying to explain to them something, and they're so narrow-minded, they're only stuck on the little thing instead of seeing the bigger thing? Like, no, what I'm trying to tell you is, look, but you're like, no. you just narrow-minded. You can't see the bigger picture. God wants to show you something more, and you're stuck on what's not happening. And, and that, 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 that is a form of Lucifer. Let's just take Lucifer. Lucifer was so prideful that it resulted in his great what? His great fall, right? He was Humpty Dumpty, and he fell off his wall, and, and he took some with him. And when people offended... When people are offended, the offense is rooted in pride. Just remember that. It's always rooted in pride. Any offense that you and I have will always be rooted in pride. That's all it is. It's rooted in pride. And some people can't even handle the thought of being wrong. When you can't handle the thought of being wrong, man, you're going back to Lucifer. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's Lucifer characteristics. Hate to say it, but it's the truth. We're not always right. There's times where you have to say, I was wrong. Number three, unfairness. That's another characteristic of offense. People with offense often feel people in authority have treated them unfairly. If you have an issue with your boss, you're offended. If you have an issue with church leadership, I remember when, I'm going to say it. If you're in here, oh well. When we, when, we, when we ordained some pastors uh, originally, when we first started, we had people get offended. Stop. We had people get offended in the church because they felt that they were not qualified. I'm thinking, dang, Lucifer in the flesh. How in the world do you sit there and start being so critical and judgmental of who God chooses? The only reason people had that attitude is because they had entitlement of an opinion. And here's the reality. When God chooses someone, you respect that and you honor that, and that goes for your work too. If God promotes someone in your job, be respectful. Honor that leader. Respect that person. Yeah, but you should hear them talk, man. They're disrespectful. Okay, fine. But that doesn't mean that you need to change who you are because they're not respectful. It's your EB again. They got your emotional button. Boop. <laughs> Boop. And you're just someone's remote in someone's hand. Stop it. It doesn't matter. The scripture says this. Even to the harsh, serve them. That's so hard. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I remember my boss was a homosexual, and he couldn't stand me because he knew I was a Christian. And he was a flaring homosexual, man. He would talk about what he did the night before in our meetings. And I would just have to bite my tongue and be like, okay, God, by my tongue, and he hated me, he mistreated me, but guess what? But God kept promoting me in the company. <laughs> and he was my boss, and he couldn't touch me because the district managers just kept promoting me. Up, 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 up. You know why? Because the way up is going down. So you got to humble yourself, and God promotes you. The reason probably you have not been promoted is because you still have an ego issue. You still have a pride issue that God needs to address. And then God starts promoting you. God st he starts blessing you. God wants you blessed. He wants, he wants to give you the desires of your heart. But let's be honest. Let's deal with the offense issues that we have in the church. Church people are the most offended people. It's true. I've, I've worked in the world, and I've worked in the church. I've worked in the mega church. And I've worked in the small church. And you know what? They all look alike. But far be it from you and me. We have to make a personal decision that I will not be an offender. Offending people. Would the opportunity be there? Yeah, but just get it right. 
Rescue me, God. Save me from me. Not to say that you haven't experienced some kind of pain. Maybe you're here today and you were sexually abused when you were a child. Maybe you're sitting here today and you've gone through a very horrible divorce. Maybe you're here today and you had a dirty business partner who just did you wrong and caused you to lose a lot of money. Maybe there were friends that you trusted with your life and they hurt you. They did you wrong. Jesus said, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. But know that it is for righteousness sake. When you get hurt by someone and you respond with love, heaven throws a party for you and me. They say, that's my girl. Or that's my guy. It's a choice. I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, you choose life. You have no control of what other people do. You can only control you. Number four, respect. I gave you that one. The world has taught us to demand respect, but the Bible has taught us to humble ourselves and serve with love. Say it with me, love never fails. Number five, everyone's favorite, control. Offensive people often desire to control the situation. When control and having it my way cannot exist, people leave churches and people leave relationships. We've been here for seven years. We've seen people come and go. And most that have left have left because they were offended. It's amazing how many people get offended today over the most minute things, foolish things. Look at Matthew 18, 15 says, if your brother wrongs you, go and show him his fault. Between who? You and what? Him. He didn't say go be the drama club. Go tell everyone that you know how you feel. Don't be the person that wears their emotions on their sleeve. Every time something goes wrong, you go on social media and you put on your, emo your emoji. I feel annoyed. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, you're constipated, bro. That's what that looks like. That ain't annoyed. That's constipation emoji. Wrong one. Seriously, I mean, we just, we just kind of like social media is an awesome platform, but it's also a dangerous one for you and me. Because you have the power at the tips of your finger to type something stupid. At the tips of your finger to cause harm to someone. At the tips of your finger to damage someone's reputation. At the tips of your finger to do something that can literally destroy someone. And all because you're offended. Hey, I'm going to tell myself, there's been times where I've seen some Christians do some stupid stuff, and I just want to correct them right there. <laughs> so I type it, and then I erase it all. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Jesus, save me right now. <laughs> right? Because you're just like, what is wrong with these people? How about Jesus? And so how do you deal with it? If you got a problem, you go, you go talk to the person face to face. You don't go around slandering people, gossiping about people. You don't go around, you know, starting committees and, and trying to get everybody on your side because you have the right opinion. No, no, that's ungodly. It's, it's demonic. It's from the pit of hell. It's Satan and his spirit, and that's his character. If that's the character you want to have, they keep doing that. But the Spirit of God doesn't have that. The Spirit of God has unity, has peace, has joy. And that's the Spirit God wants back in his church. And it starts with you. Say it. It starts with me. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. What are you saying? And if you ever hear someone say something, you know what? America has a new phrase. If you see something, say something. Well, I got one for the church. If you hear something, say something. 
Nobody likes that one, I know. All the Holy Ghost people are just like. If they're sitting next to you, don't look at them. Just talk to them later, deal with them later. But look what it says. It says, keep it between you and him privately. Everybody say privately. And if he listens to you, you have won back your brother. Shouldn't that be the, the goal? Shouldn't that be the reward that, man, I want that person back? But don't confront anyone until you made it a matter of prayer. Why? Because God answers prayers, not complaints. Make it a matter of prayer. Why? God answers prayer, not complaints. I'll end with this. I have forgiven. I have been hurt. I have forgiven. I know I did the whole write their name down. Okay. How do you know if you truly have forgiven? Here's the, here's the test. Here's the test. The person who has hurt you, if the person who has hurt you was in the same room with you in any environment and you have no pain, no resentment, no, uh, no ill feeling, you've forgiven. However, if you are uncomfortable in the same room with that person who has caused you hurt, pain, offense, if that still bothers you, you haven't forgiven. That's the only way to test it. There are people in this church who have said things about me that I know of, and they're still coming here, but I have chosen to forgive. And I treat them no different. Like, hey, man, what's up? Why? Because love is like pouring hot coals on someone's head. My love will lead them to repentance. And I have had that too. They come back and say, hey, I said something about you. Please forgive me. No biggie. Kurt, our marriage ministry leader, our elder, talks smack about me back in the days. But he came back and said, Pastor, please forgive me because I said a lot of bad things about you and you never treated me different. I told him, Kurt, let's just go win souls, man. Let's stop the drama and let's start winning some people to Jesus. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.